somebody's lacking a folder and would like to have one, steal one from another bench. If you see somebody looking around that needs one, grab one and give it to them. We'll move them around. Praise God. Number four in the blue folder. I mean, you know, Jesus ought to be praised this morning. Somebody say, God's really good to me. Look at your neighbor and say, He's really good to you too. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, <laughs> 
cup visitors this morning, but that just went out the window. Amen. God's so good, I lose my dignity when I get to worshiping Him. Somebody needs to shout amen to that. Amen. All right, get, get out your hymns of the Spirit. I mean, yeah, hymns of the Spirit book. Oh, we worship this morning. Let's go to page 106. 106 in the hymns of the Spirit. Y'all hired a, a, a fancy new preacher to come in here and preach on uh, Pastor Appreciation Day, but you're still stuck with me singing and hollering in your ear. Y'all gonna have to live with that. Aren't you glad Jesus abides? Somebody say He abides. He abides. He's with us in the good. He's with us in the bad. I'm gonna tell you.
Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. We worship you this morning, Jesus, in our giving. We're so grateful for all the goodness that you've given to us. We thank you so much. You have been exceeding abundantly above all we could ask or think. And we just want to say thank you. We can't give you anything because everything we have, you gave it to us. So we're just going to return what you asked us to return in our tithes and our offerings. We're also in your seed that we're sowing. Lord, we just want to say thank you so much that you've blessed us so much. And Jesus, we thank you that with the promise, you said if we do this, that we can access your blessing because you are pouring out your blessing over us greater than what we can contain it. You said you rebuke the devourer for our sake, that he will not destroy our ground, fruits of our ground, or our vine will not cast our fruit before the time in the field, that all nations will call us blessed. They'll say that's a bunch of blessed folks. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. And everybody said amen. 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 your hymns of the spirit book in your hand if you still have it open to 106 look at 107 we're going to pull our worship songs actually out of the hymn book this morning Jesus said I'm the vine and you're my branches also said apart from me you can what? Do nothing. Say it again. Do nothing. John 15. He said apart from me you can do nothing. nothing. We've got to acknowledge that every day of our life. Everybody say Jesus I need you. Jesus I need you. Some of y'all don't need him at all. I didn't hear nothing. Say it again. Jesus, Jesus I, need I need you. you. Say it again. Jesus, Jesus I need you. I Put both hands up in the air and surrender to Him. Jesus, I need you. Jesus, I need you. Hallelujah. I surrender to you. I give you full control of my life. I want you to be in control. I'm yours to command, sir. Whatever you need, I'm here for you. Hallelujah. Because we know apart from you, we can do nothing. Thank you, Jesus. Without Him, I sing this course. Without Him, I could do nothing. Thank you, Jesus.
turn to page 186. You may not even need the words. But you might. 186. We're going to worship him this morning. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The amazing grace How sweet the sound <laughs> That sweet wretch like me If silence was lost <laughs>
without the music. Amazing grace, <laughs> how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost. <laughs> But now I'm found. I was blind, but now I see. Everybody say thank you, Jesus. Come on, say it again. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. We love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. We thank you for how good you are. And we thank you for... Get, getting you, down and you, dirty and getting us out of that pit of sin, Lord. We thank you that you were willing to do that for us. And we praise you for it. We praise you for it. Go ahead and get out of your seat. Give your neighbor a big old hug. Find somebody you don't know and give them a bigger hug. And let's get ready for the preaching of the word this morning.
I mean, I turned around with him in the dark, so, like. Hey, everybody. Hey. How are we doing today? Good. Good. So, I got a question. Okay. What is today? All right, I'm glad y'all know that, right? So, first of all, Lee and Sandra, come up here front and center, please. Both of us. There you go. So, here's what we have to do today, y'all. We got a lot, what's it called again today? Appreciation. What's the main word? Appreciation. Appreciation. There you go. So, we got a bunch of appreciation to do. Right for these fine people right here. Yeah. So yeah. you've got to think about it like this. They do a lot for us. And it was both of them. They're both doing it, right? Yeah. Lee's yeah. doing his thing. Sandra's supporting Lee. It's a whole team. Right? Yeah. Look. Yeah. I don't know. That's it. Yeah. So think about this. He preaches. He sings. He tries to motivate us and encourage us to do all these things. Yeah, for all these kind of things. He pokes and prods us along, right? But in a good way. So here's what I want everybody to do. Stand up real quick. Tell them how much you appreciate it. Everybody give them a hand real quick. Come on.
tend to use me more, and, and which is real not hard. Yeah. So, well, because this is the, you know, this is the church of today. Today yeah. and tomorrow. Yeah. You know, our young mm -hmm. people, we need to uh, get behind them and, 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 and raise them up and, and yes, lead sir. them in godly ways. And, yeah. and I don't know what I, what I think, but, but this young man right here, I think he'll be blessed. And, and I love you and I appreciate you being here. Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. I want to take a minute and thank this church for letting me come here. Thank Pastor Lee for all he's done in my life and the times that he's mentored me. And times, you know, your pastor, you don't know this, but we used to hunt. Our hunting spots used to be right beside each other. And at deer camp, we'd sit there around the campfire many times, and we would just talk about the knowledge we have of the Bible. And we begin to feed into each other and lift each other up and just tell stories we knew of the Bible. And actually, I got this message, and when I first wrote this message, it was for a group of young people. But I believe that in this house, it's full of a lot of young souls. <laughs> See, back um, a few months ago and everything, my son was born. And when he was born, he was put in the NICU. Mm -hmm. But let's take this a step back further. When my wife was pregnant with my son, she was at high risk. The doctors told us that there was a chance of being stillborn. Mm -hmm. And you talk about the most heartbreaking thing oh, yeah. you can go through. Well, I remember one time my wife looked at me and she said, how are you so okay with all this? She said, do you just have that faith? I said, God has given me the faith to know that he's going to be okay. That's right. Amen. And, you know, he was in the NICU, and one doctor would say he would be out in a week, and then the other one would come in and say it would be a couple months or whatever. We really didn't know. And so I went down there one night and sat alongside of him the whole night. And on that night, I was able to pray with him and speak life into him. And I watched God breathe life into his lungs. Yeah, come on. And you know, now I get reminded of the life that God breathed in his lungs yeah, in the yeah. middle of the night when he wakes me up. <laughs> and I can't be mad about it because God said, that's what I did for you. <laughs> that's the miracle I did for you. Yeah, come on. So this message is titled, What Rock Do You Stand On? And uh, first, we're going to turn to Proverbs 3, 5 through 6. It says, Trust in the Lord with all of your heart, and lean not on your own understanding. In all of your ways, acknowledge him, and he shall direct your paths. See, when we acknowledge God, and we put our faith in God, he knows where we're going. We might not know where we're going. But God knows where we're going. Yeah. Yeah. And it's that core foundation we have to have in God. And we have to have that core faith in Jesus. And we just have to know it's going to be okay on the other side. I'm not going to trust what I know, but I'm going to trust what God knows. Yeah. Yeah. You know, the world's going to come against us, and he's gonna, they're going to tell you all these lies, and the devil's going to try and break you down. Yeah. But we can't stand on the understanding that we have. We have, to under, we have to stand on the understanding of Jesus. Yeah, Amen. See, and to begin this, we must put full trust in God. Yeah. And with our full trust in God, we have to stand here wholeheartedly and fully trust God, no matter the circumstance, no matter where you are in your life. You have to say, God, I give it all to you. Yeah. I trust you fully. There is nothing I can do without you. And I know I'm going to be okay on the other side. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Sometimes you have to cling to the rock to weather the storm. Right. And when you put confidence in God and you bring that confidence to God and you bring that trust to God, God does miracles. And I'm standing here and I can show you a miracle laying right there asleep in yeah. that pew. 
That is a miracle from God, and he has blessed me and touched my life more and more ways and showed me more things I needed to know in this time of my life. He has given me patience, and he has given me a sense of being able to trust in the Lord in the times of trouble. Come on. See, Jesus is our cornerstone. Yeah. Ephesians 2, 19. Now, therefore, you are no longer strangers and foreigners, but fellow citizens with the saints and members of the household of God, having been built on the foundation of apostles and prophets, Jesus Christ, being, Jesus Christ himself being the chief cornerstone in which... In whom the building, the whole building, be filled and fitted together, grow holy in the temple of the Lord. In whom you are being built together for a dwelling place of God in the Spirit. Yes. Yes. See, we have to build that cornerstone. We have to stand on the rock of Jesus and we have to build a cornerstone that we can stand on and that we can bring, come together in a place that we are not strangers anymore. Right. See, when we come into the house of God, we are no longer strangers. Yeah. Yeah. See, it says right there in that scripture that we are not strangers no more, but we are brothers and sisters in the name of Christ. And I'm here to tell you that's how we need to start acting. We need to stop acting like there's strangers in the world because we have accepted God into our hearts and He has called us to call these people our brothers and our sisters and to lift them up in their times of need. And see, I've seen it happen. I've seen God work miracles through this. I know y'all have done this. I've seen y'all's church send dad to Hazelhurst and to be able to lift people up and form miracles in people's lives. Yeah. See, we must trust God and build upon that foundation. And we must continue to build on that foundation and continue to trust God because we don't know what other people are going through. Yeah. We do not know what other people are going through. And God has not called us in treat them as strangers. We're supposed to treat other people, even strangers, as family. Because we're all one family in the house of God. You know, it can be just as simple as, like I said, your pastor sitting around a campfire just feeding into each other. It can be just as simple as that. As just sitting there telling stories of the Bible, telling each other what God has done in their lives, telling people, say, God's done this in my life, and he brought me from this to bring me to this. Yeah. He's reached down and pulled me up from the valley onto the top of this rock, and he's done it for me, and he can do it for you, too. Yeah. Yeah. And that is the word we need to be telling the people of this world. We need to tell them, we need to show them yeah. through our love and our kindness yeah. that God can reach down and pull you up no matter your circumstance. That's right. You know, it's the church's responsibility to build a foundation for the next generation to come upon. Amen. And see, there might not be a whole lot of youth in this church, but I bet you every single one of you have somebody in y'all's life you can pull up onto that Amen. foundation. Amen. You know, you can, it doesn't have to be in a physical building of church to have church. Right. See, once we accept Jesus Christ into our hearts, Jesus dwells inside of us. Yeah. That means no matter where we go, Jesus is inside of us, and Jesus is dwelling inside of us, so we are the church. We are the temple of God, yeah. and we are here to share the message of God and share the message of the Lord yeah. and to teach and to preach and to mentor and to help Amen. and to just sit there and be a friend sometimes or be a brother or sister yeah. Yeah. and talk and just love on each other yeah. Yeah. and show each other what they need. Amen. And see, when we do that and we trust in God and we have that confidence and we sit upon that cornerstone of Jesus and we have that core foundation and we do all these things. It does one main thing, and that builds our faith. Yeah, yeah. come on. Amen. And see, my Bible says it takes the faith of a mustard seed to move a mountain. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know how many of y'all see a mustard seed, but they're pretty small. <laughs> and you're telling me it takes that little bit of faith to move a mountain and move mountains in people's lives and be able to show people. And once we do that, it grows our faith even bigger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we can move an even bigger mountain. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We can move an even bigger rock. Yeah. 
We can move an even bigger, we can move a storm that's coming our way. We can divert a storm that's coming our way, that's coming to attack us. But through prayer, we can pray and we can divert that storm and it will not touch us. It will not harm our family. It won't harm our house. Just like that said, there was trees all around my brother's house. But there's trees right up against his house. How did the storm not damage his house? That's right. You have to know once you put your trust in God that he's not going to damage your house. He's going to keep your house holy. He's going to yeah. keep your house yeah. sacred. Yeah. He's going to keep a hedge of protection over your home. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Amen. See, if you cast out these seeds of faith, but you don't tend to the crop, your crop will die. Right. Right. See... The food for our crop is the word of God. And if we cast out the seeds and we don't read our word of God, we don't go to God in prayer, we don't spend intentional time with God, we don't set apart that time with God to spend with Him, then we aren't doing anything with our crop but letting weeds grow up and choke it out. We have to go and we have to tend our crop daily. We have to make sure it has food and water and sunlight. If you keep your faith in the dark, it's not getting any sunlight, so it's not going to grow. Right. If you're not out sharing your faith, it's not going to grow. If you're just, you say, okay, you know, I believe in you, God. I'll go to church on Sundays, but I'm not going to tell anybody about God this week. Your faith is not going to grow. That's right. Your faith is going to stay small. Yes. And if you sit there and you don't get in the water and you don't get in the fire of the Holy Spirit and you don't seek after the fire of the Holy Spirit and you don't say, God, I'm coming after you. God, I want a relationship with you. God, I want to fill your Holy Spirit upon me. I want to fill the baptism of your Holy Spirit. I want you to touch my family with the baptism of the Holy Spirit. I want you to lead people to Christ through me in the power of the Holy Spirit. Then your crop is not growing. That's right. Amen. And that is the rock we have to stand on. We have to stand on that foundation. And we have to be secure in that foundation. See, I don't know how many people in here have built a sandcastle at the beach. (laughs) What happens when the high tide comes and gets washed away? If we don't have that core foundation in Christ, and we don't continue to grow our faith as being the rock of Jesus, then when the high tide comes, our faith is gone. Our house is gone. Our house is destroyed. We have to stay intentional with the Holy Spirit. We have to keep coming after Him. We have to keep a relationship with Him. We can't just come to Him in times of trials and troubles. We have to have that everyday, daily conversation with Him. You know, there's a quote that Smith Wigglesworth said, and it said, I don't spend more than an hour praying but I don't go an hour without prayer. <laughs> Amen. That's right. And see, that's what it's about. Is we can't go an hour without praying. Right. Yeah. No matter what you do, you say, God, bless me through what I'm doing. Yes. You know, say you'd be hanging up a light fixture. Say, God, bless me as I hang up this yes. light fixture. Yes. Protect me and let there be light that Amen. shines upon the people that walk under this fixture yeah. and that your light will shine upon them. Come on. You know, probably the most important part of a building is the foundation. And if you don't have that foundation, then the building's coming crashing down. It don't matter what you build that building out of. You can build that building out of the strongest steel, the strongest brick, whatever. If you don't have that core foundation, that building is coming down. So if you build your church or build your life without the faith of God, it's going to come crashing down in front of you. And see, that's what you need is you need that foundation so your life doesn't come crashing down from when one little thing comes to you. And I've seen that time after time after time. Or somebody will have the attack of the devil and their life comes crashing down and they didn't have that faith in God and they just let it go. There was a gentleman this past week and I asked, I wasn't planning on bringing this up, but I asked y'all to pray for his family because he had went out to the parking lot and shot himself in the head. They said he had got evicted from his house, so he went out and took his life. 
And, you know, he was a stonemason, but you think about that and think about the heartbreak it's brought to his family. And if he would have had that foundation in God, you think, you say, what could I have said to him? Or should I have brought up the Bible to him or brought up the word of God to him maybe one more time? But you can't put that on you. You have to give that to God. And, but see, that is why we have to have a foundation in Christ. It's because it can be detrimental to our lives and be detrimental to our families. And once we have that foundation and we have that in our life, God will raise us up. It doesn't matter. We know no matter what the storm comes, no matter what trials we face, that God's going to raise us up and meet us on the other side. Because there's one thing I've learned in this life. Usually if you have a storm in your life, that blessing's on the other side. That God is preparing you for a blessing. See, me and my wife had to go through that trial of our life where we had to go to the high-risk doctor. We had to spend that time in the NICU with our son because he was going to be a blessing in our life. And I am claiming that from the voice of God right now. And he is going to make a great preacher one day because of wind that God has put in his lungs. Trust me, that kid has some wind in his lungs. If you don't believe me, just come to my house around midnight or so, and I'm sure he'll show you. See, Smith Wigglesworth, another quote, he said, If it is in the Bible, it is so. It is not even to be prayed about. It is to be received and acted upon. And activity is a robber. Which steals blessings, increases, comes by action. By using what we have and we know, your life must go from one faith to another. See, if we take the word of God, we start questioning it. What are we questioning? It is written. It is God's word. It is so. It is not to be questioned. It is not intended to be questioned. There's so many blessings in the Bible that we can pray over our lives and receive the blessing on our lives. There's so many healings in the Bible that we can start praying over our lives when we need a healing. You can look at stories in the Bible and find numerous of healings and blessings where God's touched somebody else's life. And you can pray that prayer over your life and God will begin to minister to you through that. God will begin to heal you through that. Amen. We can take that quote and we can learn from it. We can learn that the promises of God given to us must be received. See, God has so many promises that he wants to give us, but if we don't act upon those, that is what steals our promises from us. If we don't act upon If we don't get our word, we don't know the promises of God. If we don't spend time with God, we don't know his promises. How are you supposed to receive his promises if you're not in his word? If you're not continuing a conversation with him? How are you supposed to know what he spoke over each and every one of y'all's lives if you don't begin to speak with God every morning when you wake up? If you don't begin to eat from the table that he has set out before you? You can't get full standing away from the table. You must enter in the kitchen to fix you a meal. That's right. Amen. And you must enter into that realm of holiness. And you must enter into a conversation with God yeah. to begin to get filled. Right. Sure. Amen. Amen. You know, we must live a new life as Christians. Yeah. We must live a life not of what we did before, of not of the past. We can't turn back to that bottle. We can't turn back to those addictions that we once had. We can't go back to talking the way we used to talk. We can't listen to the music we used to listen to as Christians. You know, I had a youth one time. They said, I'm really struggling with with cussing and stuff. How How do I heal that? I said, what are you listening to on the radio? I said garbage in, garbage out. If you're listening to garbage on the radio, you're going to talk garbage out of your mouth. And, you know, he said, you know what? I'm going to try that. I'm going to try listening to worship music instead of worshiping to, listening to anything else on the radio, listening to the worldly music. And he came to me probably two weeks later, and he said, man, 
it has completely changed my life. He said, I have received more blessings in my life from listening to worship music. He said, because then when I have a thought that comes across my mind, I just begin to worship God and turn on the radio and I can worship God even more. And the thought begins to release out of my mind. See, the devil comes to give us temptations. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. And we cannot let the devil enter into our mind because it takes the smallest little teeny tiny thought for the devil to enter in there. The smallest lie that the devil tells you to enter into your mind to begin to start working in your mind and working in your heart and working in your life. And then it becomes the truth to you. But it's a lie. The truth is in the holy word of God. And that's the only truth that we can stand on. We can only stand on the word of God. We can only stand on Jesus. And whenever that lie comes in and you start to believe it, you must go to that altar. You must run to that altar. You must build it up. And you must say, God, I stand on this rock. The devil can't come at me with his lies. He can shoot fiery arrows at me, but you're going to protect me from the fiery arrows. I put on the full armor of God, and the devil cannot come after me. Because how... Can it, the battle already be won if we're in battle all the time? That's right. Amen. We're supposed to be walking in victory. Yeah. We're not supposed to be staying at battle with the devil all the time. Right. We're supposed to be walking in victory. It is finished. It is already done. The war is already won. We are walking in victory. It was nailed on the cross. So why are we keeping those thoughts in our minds? You know, it's like you take a Home Depot bucket and you just fill it up with garbage throughout life. You just, you know, you walk around and you pick up garbage and you put it in your Home Depot bucket. You know, you walk around the job site at work and you pick up trash in a Home Depot bucket. And then you take it over and you just dump it out at the feet of Jesus. At the foot of the cross. Because it is not ours to carry. Just like you take a bucket and you fill it up with garbage and throw it in the dumpster. We put our garbage at the feet of Jesus for him to take and us not to carry. Because we can't do this without him. We can't do life without him. Matthew 7, 24. Therefore, everyone who hears these words of mine and puts them into practice. We must take the words of Jesus and put them into practice right there. Like a wise man who built his house on a rock. We must build our house on the rock, I'm telling you. We can't build our house in the sand. The rain, there was a wise man that put his house in the rock. The rain came down and the storms rose and the streams rose and wind blew against the house, yet it did not fall. See, that is what I'm talking about. It's when we build our house and we build our faith on the rock of Jesus Christ. When the rains come and the streams fill up and the lakes lift up, We will not fall because we are on the rock. We are on dry ground. The storm cannot begin to attack us or begin to do any effect to us because we are on that rock. We are above what the water level can take. But a foolish man who built his house on the sand, the rain came and the stream rose and the winds blew and against it the house fell with a great crash and see we can take that right there and we can say I don't want to be in the sand I don't want to build my house on the sand because I know when stuff starts coming against me when the devil starts lying to me and the devil starts trying to defeat me that I'm going to crash down my house is going to crash down say I don't have a holy foundation in my life it's going to come crashing down and it's going to affect all the people around me see people think it might just affect them but it doesn't it affects everybody around you when your life crashes down you have so many people that feed into you and we have to feed into so many people to lift them up on that foundation because some people don't have that foundation we should be affected by other people when their life comes apart because we are in depth and we are rooted into their lives in such a great way and we mentor in their lives in such a great way that way if they don't have the foundation they can stand upon our foundation Amen. Amen. That's right. see in the Bible it talks about how the Israelites would build altars and they built altars in remembrance they, they built altars 
to remember what happened in a certain area in a certain time. And I, they built an altar as they crossed the river of Jordan. And that altar was so the future generations could come and they could see what God has done in their lives. That they walked across the Jordan on dry ground. See, God will dry up the rivers in our lives before we get to them. But we must not just cross the river, but build an altar to tell the future generation. Amen. Come on. We must see, I wouldn't be anywhere I am in my life if it wasn't for my grandmother who taught me how to storm hell with a water pistol. Yeah. <laughs> that woman right there, if you had something in your life and you went to her and she would begin to pray for it, yeah. she would tackle the devil with a water pistol, I'm telling yeah. you. She would get so mad at the devil and she would come after him. Yes. Man, and you don't want to make my grandma mad. You just asked dad how she was coming after him with a hickory. He would tell you the stories. Amen. <laughs> but see, that's what we need to do. And see, I believe as they built that altar, they set that altar with 12 stones because there was 12 tribes. Well, that's 12 different stories to tell the future generation that we cross the River of Jordan on dry ground. See, we can't just let the pastor lay the stone for us. We have to tell our own story. We have to build our own altar to tell the future generation. We have to find that person in our life to be able to mentor and to tell them, to show them the stories of God, to teach them how to share the Word of God, to teach them how to preach the Word of God, to teach them how to pray to God. See, if we don't do that, we don't have a future. Amen. If we don't teach the people around us, we don't have a future. Because who's going to take care of us Amen. as we come up? Yeah. We have to rely on the, there comes a point where we rely on the future generation to come up into our places. Come on. And that's what I have been able to have the honor is having people around me and surrounding myself like mentors that has fed into my life and has built that foundation for me where I can start to begin to take care of the generation that once stood here. Yes. Right. And I have a long way to go. I know I do, but I know the route that it takes to get there. Right. And see, once you have that discipline and you have that strategy and you know what it takes and you know what you must do to get there, you can take that course and let Amen. God work in your yeah. life. Yeah. See, and that is the key point I want y'all to get is we must build this foundation and we must show God, we must show people what God can do. Yeah, come on. We must show God that we are willing to get our hands dirty. Yeah. See, because then God will start pouring out the blessings on us. Right. See, we must put in the work. It's not going to just come to us. God's not just going to give us everything. That's we have right. to show that we're going to put in the work. Right. And we must show that we're going to spend time with Him. We must show that we're going to be faithful in our Amen. walk with Christ. Amen. We must show that we're going to stay on the path of righteousness. And that we're going to try and be more and more holy. Yeah. No, we're not going to be perfect because there was only one perfect person in the yeah. world. But we have to know that when we repent something that we can't pick that back up. I see too many people do that. When they repent, they go back to that same sin and they pick it back up and then the devil holds on to you just that much more. See, when we pick back up a storm, it attaches to us in a tenfold way onto our life and onto our spirit. And the, see, when we cast out a demon in our life and we pick him back up, the demon is even stronger when we pick him back up. Amen. And see, that's why we have to be diligent in the word of God and diligent in our time with God so we don't pick up those demons that we cast it out. Amen. See, everybody has their trials. Everybody has their demons. It's okay to have that. But you have to learn to let it go and leave it. Yeah. You have to learn to let it go and leave it and build an altar there to stand on yeah. and remember it that God did this for me. God delivered yeah. me from this. Yeah. I will not go back there because I see that rock standing right there that says it is finished. Yeah. Yeah. I see the cross up on the hill. Yeah. And the blood of Jesus has came down and washed it away. Yes. Amen. See, we are all saved and all our sins are washed away by the blood of Jesus. That's right. And see, when we truly believe that and we fully believe that and we know that Jesus shed his blood for us, for our sins, 
then there's no reason to pick that, those sins back up because right. they are washed clean. Yes. They are no more there. And see, that is what I want y'all to understand, church, is I want y'all to know that we can't just go through this life working on our faith, but we have to build something for the future generation. We have to build something for what's to come. We have to build something for the people around us because if not, we are staying inactive. Yeah. Yeah. And sometimes that means getting uncomfortable. Yeah. See, I pray to God to keep me uncomfortable in His worship. Yeah. Because I don't know if you've noticed, but when you become comfortable, you become stagnant. That's right. yeah. And I don't know how many of you came across a pool of water when it's become stagnant. And you've seen the larvae eggs and the nastiness of the water. And... I know if you're out in the woods and you're hiking and stuff, you don't drink from that water because right. it'll make you sick. Yeah. And see, if you've let your faith and you've let your life get stagnant in the Word of God, yeah. if you've gotten comfortable of where you're at, yeah. you say, you know what, I'm going to just sit back here in this back row of the church and I'm going to just be comfortable where I'm at. I'm not going to go up there, even though God told me to pray for that man. Yeah. I'm not going to speak life into that person's life. I know God has a word for me to speak life into him, but I'm not going to because I'm comfortable where I'm at. Come on. You know, you have to step out of your comfort zone and you get uncomfortable. And it's kind of like, you know, a potter sets you upon their wheel. God's the potter and you're the piece of clay and he yeah. begins to mold you. And as he begins to mold you, you're going to start getting turned and twisted in different right. ways and it's going to be uncomfortable. But at the end of that, God is going to make a masterpiece of art. Yes. And see, at the end of this, God has a home waiting for us up in heaven yeah. that's a masterpiece of art. Yeah. And see, I don't want to know what's it like in hell. I want to know what it's like in heaven. Yeah. I want to experience heaven firsthand. So I want to do my diligence to follow what God says and to listen to what God says. And... I want to thank y'all's pastor for doing that for me and teaching me the word of God to know where to go. And I want to take this time. I'm going to have a, I have a shorter message today, I know, than what y'all are used to. I don't have nearly the wind in my lungs that Pastor Lee has. But I'll get there. Because I know what path can take because he showed me. But I want to take this time and I want to have Pastor Lee come up here and I want us to pray for him because this is Pastor Appreciation Sunday. And I want to open the altars for anybody else who's in here that says, I have, not, I have failed to build that foundation. You have the example of how to build the foundation right here. He has followed God's commands. He has followed what God has told him and built a foundation to remember what God has done in his life. And now it's y'all's turn as a church to take what God's done in y'all's life and build a foundation of your own to show the future generations. And if that's y'all and y'all say, you know what, I have failed to do that. I want to also open up the altars for a time for y'all to come up here. Do um, you mind playing the piano? For me? Sorry to throw you on spot. And I want to open up the altars and have a time to say, you know what, I failed to do so. I failed to build the altars for the future generations, but I'm going to get my heart right right now in this time so I can begin to do that. I can begin to reach out to young people in my life. I can begin to reach out to the people around me and pull them up on the rock that I'm standing on. I can invite that person to church. I can invite that young person to church. I can build the youth in my church just by solely starting to invite people. Invite your grandkids, your kids, or somebody, just your neighbor even. But I also want to take a time in this, and I want the key leaders of the church to pray for your pastor, that he begins to build his foundation, that he continues to build his foundation that he's built, that he continues to lead, that he continues to fill himself up in the Word of God. See, we're not intended to operate out of, a, you take a pitcher of water and you fill it up with water you start draining that pitcher, we're not intended to operate in what's in the pitcher, but what overflows out of that pitcher. See, God wants us to operate in the overflow of the blessings. And I want to pray, take y'all to take a moment and come up here and pray that over y'all's pastor. You don't mind, Dad, 